Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Artisan Cutlery Mini Accelerator, a Mike Snowdy design. I missed that last time, but I wanted to make sure and add that in there. This knife is available and the price tag is very reasonable. I'll link it right down below so you guys can check it out along with its big brother, which is literally the exact same thing, but much larger. Uh, it does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Artisan Cullery for providing this knife for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please, make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Um, let's go ahead and get a measurement real quick. The overall length of this guy, the smaller guy, is actually only coming in at 7.35 inches. Under 7.5 blade length is coming in at 3 and an eighth. Cutting edge is coming in at three inches. It really does look and feel like a larger knife, and that's because of how big the blade is relative to the, or how tall the blade is relative to the handle. Um, but it, it actually is a, I, I would say a small, medium, like a me, man, I about a medium sized life, knife. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Any custom scales you see in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. So up against the 8010 and the 8020.5. Uh, you can see here it's much closer to the size of the 8020.5. How about up against the Spyderco? PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, yeah, we're looking at, uh, once again, about the size of the Para 3 or closer to the smaller one, I guess I should, should say. Up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Hogue Deca. Alrighty, how's the action? Honestly, it's very similar to other artisan color knives in terms of the quality of action. This guy in particular is going to be a little easier to deploy because of that nice large opening hole there and it works very well thumb flick it uh you would think it had a it has a front flipper or back flipper but it, it doesn't there's some there's some spots there would indicate that uh, you can do that but it's it's actually not the case i'm just telling you that because i realized i was confused just now <laughs> the reverse flick is definitely the easiest way to kick it out but like i said doing the thumb flick is also very good lock bar access is fine um this knife is uh, maybe slightly awkward slightly and maybe it's just because of the, the size of it uh, when when you do the thumb deployment it's made easier because the natural position of your uh, this finger at least for me uh, falls to an area where it's basically just the back of that hole and without even thinking about it so access to the lock bar is good it's got kind of a tight lock bar tension just a little bit no double clutch or anything like that and there's plenty of space to let the thing just fall down to your finger um, on the sharpening choil and not the actual blade, which is nice. The pivot action is also nice and smooth and the detent strength is, it's stronger than I would have expected for a knife of this size. And I think that might just have to do with the lock bar tension. Um, that's fine though, there's nothing wrong with that. Let's do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's actually a little thinner, slightly thinner than the Spyderco Para 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Um, this guy folded up is very similar to the Spyderco Para 3. It's just not quite as tall, much smaller than the PM2. Materials, what are we looking at here? Frag textured blasted titanium and then a, uh, a CPM S90V blade, which is awesome. I love that they're getting these S90V blades out for as, as little as they are. It's very competitive. This one's listing as sand polished or sand washed. I've noticed there's a little bit of variation in their sand wash. Sometimes it's like this and it's okay, right? I mean, it's still better than their basic belt satin, but uh, I'd give it like for the sand polishing scale, I'd give this like a B minus. And then there's knives like my Satir where it's like, oh my God. Gosh, it's beautiful, right? So, a little bit of variation. I, I've handled quite a few sand polished knives from Artisan Cutlery, and they all look at least good, but some of them look way better. Artisan, uh, the closer you, like the most reflective one I've got, and it's buried right now, I'd give it, and you know what? Now, you know what? We should probably get that out so you guys can, I want everybody to see exactly what it is that I'm talking about here. So, let me find that uh, Satir here real quick. All right, I found it. Now, at first glance, I don't know if you're actually going to be able to see what it is I'm talking about, but the Satir just has a higher quality reflectivity. Look at the definition here, huh? On the on the right, you can see you can almost perfectly see right up the uh, the old nostrils there. On this side, we got a little fog. I'm not really, you know, I might be reptilian in this one. Um, 
it is not the it's not the angle it's it's not the the bevel or anything like it's not the geometry of the blade it's that the the reflectivity on this one is just better um that's the kind of stuff that you pick up on when you review thousands of knives <laughs> I, this is fine it looks good but artisan we got to get them all looking like this right if you're going to do it let's let's find some consistency there and make them all look good um anyways i honestly Oh, yeah, we're talking about materials. S90V, titanium, some milling. No, no milling on the inside. Steel lock bar insert. But, yeah, very good. Let's weigh it. So the weight on this guy coming in at 3.5 ounces for 3.1, 3.15 inches of blade, something like that. It's not bad at all. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can, whoops, you can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. So the pivot is almost certainly a T8, which, there we go, you can see right there. Yeah, we have a T8, and then we have T6 screws down here, and two T6 screws for the pocket clip. I would prefer that everything is T8, but at least it's minimal. There's just a couple on each side, a couple of clip screws. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness here. Uh, blade stock thickness is coming in at 124 thousandths. Honestly, a little bit, no, that's about, that's about right on the money. 124 thousandths. All right, moving on to the meat and potatoes here. I do like this design. Um, I think that a lot of my critiques really, if I'm being honest, are going to come down to the fact that my hands just feel like may maybe slightly too large for this. I liked the uh, I liked the full-size accelerator and my hand just sort of melted into those lines. Here, it's okay. I think my favorite position is choked up. Choked back, I just feel really crammed in right here. Now, if you have smaller hands than me, I think you'll be relatively comfortable, but you're still going to be aware that these are flat, frag textured pieces of titanium that have some chamfers around the edges, right? There's also specific lock-in zones, so they really want you to be in a certain place. Uh, you can move around a little bit, but it's kind of like position one or position two. So it's okay. It's not bad. I think what I really like is the fact that we finally have like a short clip. Uh, there's no reason to have a huge long banana clip or e approaching anywhere even close to 50% the length of the handle. So I think that's really, really good. I do like the look of the frag texturing. That's just me personally. And I think the way that they did it is pretty good. It's about a medium texture, so it's not like going to tear up your thumb, but it'll certainly provide meaningful traction. We have the Artisan Cutlery logo here on the other side. It just says S90V, and then there's a bunch of numbers and letters. I don't know why they have to put that on there, but they did. So, okay. The blade is done very, very well. It looks great, other than the fact that it's not polished quite as much as some of their other. I mean, maybe you'll get a higher polish on yours. I don't know. The edges are nicely knocked down. There's a little bit of a harpoon notch. I, I find this to be a fairly comfortable position to put your thumb, but only in certain situations. I mean, how often are you going to use the knife like this, right? Uh, for draw cuts, putting your finger up here, it's a little bit uncomfortable because this is on top of a swedge. I guess you could put it on the notch. It's okay, right? It's kind of a robust harpoon modified drop point thingy, robot, rhinoceros, whatever you want to call it. Um, the flat carries out to about 70% the length of the blade. Big swedge here. Looks good. Nothing we haven't seen before. Inside of the opening hole is knocked down for comfort while you're deploying it. And the cutting edge is nice and even on both sides. I would say eh, it's probably, I mean, honestly, it's about middle of the road in terms of thickness. Let's see how the factory edge does on something like paper. Doesn't prove much, but it's okay. It's slicing, right? It's not like, uh, this doesn't feel like a lightsaber or anything like that, but it'll do what you need it to do. And you can touch it up or reprofile it if you want to. This is S90V, hardened to 59 to 61. I'll remind everybody who's kind of like, you know, conditioned to cringe at that range. That's for M390. S90V along with all other compositions has its own uh, optimal range. Now, yeah, you could get S90V harder, right? But each composition reacts a little bit different to going up and up and up and up or down and down and down and down, right? So S90V, much like M390, was not originally created for pocket knives. It was created for something else and then became popular in pocket knives. So if S90V is actually optimally hardened for what it was originally meant for, it's quite a bit lower. It's like in the mid-50s, believe it or not. I think it's industrial food prep. That's what I always guess. 
When it comes to a pocket knife, though, you do want it harder. You don't need it to be as hard as M390's optimal range, which in my opinion is about 60 to 62. S90V actually does very, very well at even 59. 59 to 61 is very, very good and will absolutely outshine M390 in terms of edge retention, which is why reviewers such as myself and people down in the comments seem to prefer nowadays in 2023 an S90V blade to an M390 blade. Disadvantages would include, it's not quite as stainless as M390, it's still stainless, still not quite as stainless, right? And you might, depending on how hard it is, you might have a little bit more trouble sharpening it. It should be almost exactly as tough as M390, but you're going to hear varying reports of that. Personally, I think it's one of the best value super steels that you can get right now in the 2023 knife world, and it is a powder form steel. So I being somebody who's is fine with M390, but honestly pretty sick of it, and really happy to see that we're getting some S90V on knives like this. Moving on here, there is no lanyard hole, but there is a lanyard bar in the middle of this gold uh, backspacer that we've got on this particular variant. I honestly don't know if they have different colors and different variations. There is no mounting position for lefties. Sorry, lefties. Uh, the pocket clip is placed in a nice spot, though, and I, I really like the shape of it. I like that there's a little ramp right here. Honestly, in and out of the pocket is a little bit of a fuss, but not too bad. Retention on the clip is very good. Carry depth is also good. That's all the more that's sticking up out of your pocket, so I don't, really don't have a problem with that. Clip is just not in the way at all. You've got what I assume is the Snowdy logo right there. We have a steel lock bar insert uh, that's doubling as the over travel stop, so that's good. We have a simple stop pin with no shouldering on the tang of the blade. That's fine, it doesn't need it. This knife runs on bearings, you probably knew that. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No um, uh, lock stick, no pivot lash, uh, no double clutch, anything like that. Very consistent in here, right about what we'd expect. Again, detent right there is good. And the, oh, we haven't shown the uh, lockup percentage. Here's your lockup right here. That's fine. I don't expect this knife to be like super duper crazy, dig up the whole railroad with the knife or something like that. Um, but uh, there's your lockup percentage right here. And then we have pretty perfect centering, honestly, with no detent lash. So this guy comes in a little less expensive than its big brother. At one, if I remember correctly, $189 for this. I really don't have much of a problem with that. Yes, it is a little smaller, but it really doesn't feel like a small knife unless you're gripping it right here. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world, and honestly, I don't think this design translates nearly as well for a knife of this size versus it being much larger. When you have very confined zones like that, it's nice when the handle is so much larger so you can still move around a little bit within those zones. People who have much smaller hands, you might enjoy this a little bit more. It's not an ergonomic masterpiece. It's certainly not the best thing that Artisan Cutler has ever come out with. But in terms of execution and materials uh, and value, all of that, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think it's a great value, right? It's really going to come down to do you like the look of it? If you like the look of it, right, everything else works fine enough and the value is absolutely there. So, um, yeah, in that sense, I would recommend it to you but not to everybody. I hope that makes sense. I still think this is a good knife and I think the price tag on it is very, very good. Arson Cutlery, please, more consistent with this finish. This looks so much better. This is okay. And no, it's not a different finish. This is the same finish. Uh, anyways, like I said, links in the description for this guy. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.